you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, lots going on, but I'm sure you feel the same as well. <laughs> Just um, a bit. <laughs> yes. So why don't you introduce yourself briefly and then we're going to get into a conversation about um, how you've been involved in AP Connect year two last year. Okay, so I'm Alison Lockname from Potwood Hall College. I'm an early years lecturer um, and when I started on the programme, I just started as um, an AP in the department, in the college for six hours remission a week. So it's something I've been asked to do and sort of thought about for a couple of years and bit the billet and thought, right, I'll have a go. Yeah, fab, great. Yeah. And um, so I've been in, well, you have as well. We've both been involved mm -hmm. in the Advanced Practitioner Connect project. Over the last couple of years, really, we've known about um, what, what's been going on across the country a little bit. Um, but I think it's really, as year three is about to kick off, which is amazing news. Exciting. Yeah, um, we just thought it'd be really cool to catch up with some of the people who've been involved in year two mm -hmm. and talk about the types of things that you've been doing and what you've learned and all of those great things that we were chatting about before we pressed record, so. <laughs> um, so I suppose we could just start with um, how you got involved mm -hmm. um, and what that experience included and, and what you thought of those those different things that you experienced. Yeah, okay, so um, it was something I had a quality was in talks with Bolton College about us doing something together as a collaborative project. Um, and I applied for the funding through the ETF to do so. Um, there was six of us on the team and we were asked, you know, if we were interested in going to do the, the two days um, in Birmingham. So I put forward straight away, I was like, oh God, this will be really exciting. I'm new to the job. I want to see, you know, what there is um, and was successful. So three of us went along to those two days it was the best CPD I have ever been on in my life. It was fantastic. I learned so much, met so many people, and that was the first time that we, we actually met the staff from Bolton. Oh, so it, which was really bizarre. Um, hit it off straight away, and that has definitely been one of the biggest pluses from the whole thing. We worked so well together. Um, and I was talking to Angela the other day, and we said, we sort of feel like we're one college, even though it's two completely different institutions, uh, which has been really, really exciting. So we then, we, the project and what we were gonna do had already been decided and it was good to great. So we wanted to look at changing the culture in the college, celebrate those good, solid, consistent, good teachers, but do something to just give them a bit more momentum to get back into, thinking about teaching and learning, get excited and motivated again and hopefully improve, you know, their grade profile and their experiences within the college. Um, and we both had a very, very similar model and that's what we wanted to do. Um, and it's just been, the whole project has been fantastic. So year one, um, we did that, we were thrown into the deep end, you know, we just had a go, all the coaching and mentoring skills that we learned on that was fantastic. Joanne Miles came and did a session with us, a joint session with Hotwood and Bolton about coaching and mentoring. So it just gave all of us so many skills. Um, and Lou will laugh at me because my digital and technical skills weren't that good and I've been forced into doing things um, over the time. And it was just really invigorating and inspiring to see that just giving staff that an hour, an hour every couple of weeks to get together and talk about teaching and learning, the difference it made that they wanted to join in and we had professional learning squares. So we had three separate ones, we had 12 staff involved and uh, one of the APs supported each group. We got the peer observations going. That has been what they said, their feedback is that was the biggest learning curve because we taught them what a peer observation or peer visit or peer review should be. It's not just go in, be critical, come out. It's the, you know, it's got to be beneficial to both parties and across the both years, that's really, really improved and we've had fantastic feedback about it. Um, just the conversations between people, the networking, you know, this last year, Twitter, I didn't do Twitter. 
<laughs> so we went to London in year two. I'd never been on Twitter, um, and now I'm on it all the time. And you know, that's how we sort of met more and seen more of each other. Um, so that's just been fantastic. But it's altered the culture in the college. So the APs were seen as that person you went to in the deficit model. If you needed to see them, you weren't very good at teaching and somebody was going to have to help you. Mm. And it's slowly, you know, we've had to chip away, but now staff come to us. Yeah. I really want to talk to you about this. I, I know I need to improve this or I've had a fantastic lesson. It's been amazing. And they want to talk about it. So we've got to keep that momentum going. And especially in this environment now with COVID and lockdown and digital teaching, uh, we've had to learn, they're having to learn, and we just want to keep that going yeah. as much as we can, really. Yeah, no, that sounds great. And, and there's quite a few things in there that I'm really interested about, actually. So um, when you did the two days training um, in terms of coaching and mentoring, what can you remember some of the things that really resonated with you? Um, think trying to put yourself in that other person's shoes and just thinking about what questions you ask how you ask them and to listen to learn to use that wonderful thinking environment even if you don't set it up in that way yeah to if, if you follow that ethos even if that other person you know you've not explained it to them but you're just listening and not interrupting and letting them think that for me has been the most powerful part of improving my coaching and mentoring um i really like some of the activities we did as well and there's ones that i've taken from that and used in my teaching mm. so there was like a jigsawing activity where we had pre-reading to do that then we had to get scan and we all moved around and then all came back together and shared and you know when you're trying to teach legislation which as we all know is not the most exciting topic i use it every time great so it, it's given me ideas that then I can pass on to others. Yeah. And it's interesting that yesterday I was having a conversation um, with someone and we were talking about how the, some of the most powerful professional development that's happened mm -hmm. during lockdown seems to be linked to this providing spaces to think and to process mm -hmm. things um, and talk about teaching and learning. And I think it's becoming more obvious as I keep reflecting and looking back over the last, or we're at 15 weeks, 15, 16 weeks now, that, that the power of, of somebody listening mm. and somebody being able to speak in a, in a safe space really does help teachers to improve their practice doesn't it whether it be an individual basis or whether it be in a group basis yeah i mean we were talking before about i delivered some send cpd that we've done in college about effective use of your learning support in the classroom um, and we had to change that because it's mandatory training so we've had to change that model to doing it via zoom i've used nearpod which you know never used before and actually love it i think it's amazing because it's so collaborative um, and then use the breakout rooms and as you said staff were really they were sharing their experiences but I think the, the biggest thing that we've said those staff that may be in college in the that whole staff CPD environment don't really engage very much mm. or pull a bit of a face you know and don't like that side of it because they know everybody can see them that's kept that engagement a bit more and they've actually participated more whether that's just been through the collaboration through Nearpod or the chat function but that culture has changed as well because they know that people can see what they're doing um, or even those that turn the cameras off which is fine have actually joined in in a way that maybe in that physical environment they might not have done yeah, isn't it strange? There's um there's a quite a lot of debate going on at the minute about cameras on or off. Um, and one of the girls that is in the Joy FE group uh, has been doing some research on um, people's perceptions and people's feelings around cameras on or off. But just going back to that, what you were you were saying about there seems to be this really a real positive engagement with professional development that's delivered online. I we've seen the same. So me and my team. Um, at Barnsley, I've seen a phenomenal uptake of, of professional development 
And there is definitely some elements, key elements to that, that I think has made it successful. And I think one of them is that people haven't had to leave what they were doing and go somewhere else. You just kind of log in and, <laughs> and you're there. Um, but the other bit of it is that if you build, if you build an approach with the professional development that does encourage people to take part and again does feel you use mechanisms and tools like you mentioned Neopod that mm. um, allows people to think together or work together mm. like you mentioned breakout rooms the the facilitation and the use of technology to to you know give the structure where people share experiences and and, and think through things together mm. is really powerful, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think for me that, you know, so we've been asked to deliver um, at the National AP conference, yes. you know, Louis asked us to do that, uh, me and Angela, and we barely used Zoom beforehand. We've been reluctant about using it. Um, we've spent hours putting this presentation together. Um, and it's funny now looking back, I can see how I would change what we did. Um, but that was a massive learning curve for us. And the first time we presented, and there was, I think there was 80 people on at one point. Wow. Yeah, and it was just so strange talking over a presentation, not being able to see people. Um, me and Angela like a bit like a double act, you know, on two different places. Um, but luckily, we know each other and it works. And I think I think we did entertain a few people <laughs> so it was in between us. But that was my first introduction to a proper Zoom type thing that I I was presenting. And then going into the breakout rooms and seeing other people and how other people did things, you know, it was just really good to start to think, right, if I can do it that way, yeah. then mm -hmm. I need to bring that to my, my institution and think about how we can use it. And I mean, it seems like a lifetime ago now. Um, and in some ways I was more nervous, as was Angela, and she won't mind me saying that, about doing it this way than standing up in front of a room full of people because we're used to doing that, aren't we? Yeah. But now I've completely got over that and you know it's just thinking what's the best for what the situation is yeah which is which is which is great and it's it is amazing how things have technology has allowed us to remove some of the barriers um, and we've had to we've been thrown in at the deep end and we've had to figure out how to do things differently but yeah um, and so I want to go back to um, the project so I want to talk a little bit more about the project because I think what you did was really interesting actually. So take me through um, sort of a little bit of your rationale about what you wanted to, what you were trying to achieve and then take yes. me through um, what you did and, and how you got okay. that this year. Yeah, so year one, um, we wanted to get those staff that were consistently good teachers, motivated and inspired to improve their teaching. Um, and there was one comment at the end that really encompassed something that I think I would resonate with a lot of other people. I always thought good was good enough. Oh, interesting. One member of staff said, who ended up being an outstanding, you know, we, had a great, we, we still grade our observations and he got an outstanding observation. So we set up sm uh, three professional learning squares of four staff with an AP. They met... Um, rough, we had a launch event, they met once a month, they talked about teaching and learning, we bought them a book in the first year called Pimp My Lesson, which was a really easy, quick book to look at, we talked about, they did a self-assessment of what their skills were, mm. which then they led the professional learning squares, they decided what it was as a collaboration between the four of them that they wanted to improve. I would set them reading from the book to do. They would do, they all carried out peer observations, focusing on what they wanted to get from that peer observation and what the teacher wanted them to look at and be that second pair of eyes. Mm -hmm. And it was really about, you know, it's not an observation, it's a peer review, a peer visit, whatever you want to call it, but it's got to be beneficial and positive for both members of staff. Right. So we'd share ideas, talk about that. We took them out of our observation, teaching and learning assessment um, process and they were able at the end of the, so we started in October and in February they were given a two week window to choose the exact lesson that they wanted for their observation to showcase their teaching. 
So we went in with the assumption everything was good and hope and we looked at the areas that they'd self-assessed that they wanted to improve that had been the focus of the project for them moving forward. Um, and it was just amazing. A hundred percent improved and got outstanding features within the lesson. Great. And that was across both colleges because um, it was run at Bolton College as well. Yeah. And we had 67% uh, across the colleges who got an outstanding, we grade, so we got an outstanding grade. Bolton don't grade, but it was, you know, you still got that idea. Yeah. So the feedback we got was phenomenal. The culture change in the college people were starting to say, well, I want to go. Can I be part of that? Um, coming to see us, we weren't that deficit model. We weren't, you know, you go and see the AP because you're not doing very well, you've got to improve. Yeah. It was, yeah, I want a bit of this. I like to be celebrated. I want someone to give me a pat on the back. I want to talk about teaching and learning. Um, so both, we then applied for year two and we were successful. So again, it was another collaborative um, project. We ran them slightly differently. So Bolton used first year participants to be ambassadors. Um, we decided we wanted a group of advanced staff. So staff who had a spiky observation profile between good and outstanding or staff who just got their first outstanding and we wanted to keep that momentum going. But we also wanted to run the same project that we'd done the year before alongside. But we went too big. Um, we had a full change in seat. We had a new principal, deputy principal, and vice principal. So, you know, there was a lot of other priorities, and we made the decision that we had to just run with the advanced group. Yeah. So there was, I led the project, I ran that. It ran in exactly the same way as the year before, but we had more meetings. Right. Um, but because there was eight of them. I don't feel the collaboration and that teamwork was as successful. Mm. I think it might have been better to split into two groups of four, but they this time did a minimum of two peer observations and then voluntarily continued doing that. Great. Which was great. Um, we wanted again to think about, you know, what can we give them? So we've got the Rose and Shine principles book for them yeah. so that was a focus for them to look at in there and think about um, and again we had great success um, we didn't get the outstanding grade but we got outstanding improvements and that was you know in in the evaluation of the project we realized yes we would have been better doing the two smaller groups yeah. but also the ethos changed and what we were grading against were completely different yeah. To the thief. So if it had been the year before, most of those lessons would have been outstanding. Yeah. But because we're looking at the learner voice, the recall, those different skills now, that's what had that impact. Um, so on the evaluation from that, what we want to do going forward this next year is staff from first year one cohort, year two cohort. So we've had focus groups about teaching and learning champions who'd be included, who still want to keep that momentum going. Um, and we've got a nice little group of people who want to do that. Great. Yeah, so, and year three's, year three's on the way. Yes. Well, so we're excited to hear what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, real, I'm sure um, information will be coming out soon. I know there's um, an expression of interest um, link gone out on Twitter this week. So um, I'm sure any day now there'll be there'll be stuff coming out but yeah I think um I'm interested in in a couple of things actually from the project what do you think what do you think made the most difference to the teachers and, and what are the types of things they fed back as part of their feedback um having I think I think what made the most difference was having collaboration with staff from other departments we're a two campus college mm -hmm. Um, and you know this was bringing people from both campuses from all the different departments together and we had a lot of comments so we had a lecturer from construction mm -hmm. who went into observe a lecture in access okay and beforehand he said I really didn't think I was going to get anything from it because we're completely two poles apart mm -hmm. and came out saying I love this and used it straight away the following day in one of his lessons great 
you know, and vice versa. And, you know, so I think that was really positive mm. that it, and it's made staff in different departments, you know, which I know I'm stereotyping and things, but sometimes, you know, construction type like to stay together and your health and social care. And I think that's a culture in most colleges. Mm. They realise they can learn from each other and they're actually wanting to see what goes on and celebrate what goes on in other parts of the college. Yeah. So I think that was really powerful. Um, and having that time to talk and be listened to yeah. and to somebody to validate your ideas and your suggestions and get that reflection back, that reflective practitioner that I think some staff get to a point where they might do it personally, but they won't have that professional dialogue. Mm and getting that going again in staff rooms and stuff. And that's certainly something that we've seen happening and we want to move forward yeah. and keep going. I agree. I, I think one, I, I've all, you know, departments always, ever since I've been in, in education, different departments say, oh, well, we're, we're different. Yes. Um, and you all, like, everybody tells you that they're different. Different. Um, I won't work in hours. Yeah, it's a catchphrase um, that I chuckle about because ultimately, as you know, teaching and learning is teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. And it's, yes, it's about, you know, um, the context and, and adapting and flexing and tailoring your approach. But ultimately, the principles of teaching and learning are the foundations and the building blocks. Mm -hmm. And I believe the same for professional development. Mm -hmm. It's about creating the conditions where people feel valued and listened to. And um, out of interest, were most people did did the staff who were, were part of the project were they opt in? Were they were they? They were invited, so okay. it was um, conversations within the quality team, mm -hmm. um, and then program managers were contacted to say, you know, these are the staff members that we think, so we use ProObserve, so we pulled data off ProObserve, and then, you know, we sort of looked about what we knew, we'd speak to the programme managers, because obviously we had to have their buy-in and their support to be able to do so, yeah. um, and then we approached staff and asked them, and it was really nice, I think quite a lot of staff were like quite, quite pleased to have been chosen. Yeah. Um, and the gentleman who said about, you know, I thought good was good enough. He was actually one of the more reluctant to participate. Mm. You know, he, he was um, a math tutor. And again, what am I going to learn from somebody else? But mm. he has been our biggest advocate for it. So mm. it's really nice to see that. And we have had staff. We did have some on year two, two staff from the same department. Um, and they both said, we've never had those conversations together. And I'd spot them having a chat about teaching and learning in that department rather than, you know, just in that group. So, yeah, they were, they were all, everybody who was on it. The first year we had a couple who, we were concerned people would want the buy-in because they got to chose, choose the lesson. Yeah. And they weren't going to be observed. They were out of that process. And there was a couple in cohort one that mm. actually didn't fully engage. And that was what they wanted from it. Mm. Um, and they did really well in it, but they didn't fully get into the whole process. So in year two, we were very clear, you know, if you're joining up, you've got to be attending the meetings, mm. coming to the professional learning squares, having the buy-in. And, you know, if you don't, then we'd have to have a conversation about whether you continued or whether you went back into the normal yeah. process. Um, and I think setting those ground rules quite clearly at the beginning, we did, that wasn't an issue. And it is interesting because you've mentioned a few things actually um, in the conversation about reward and recognition. There definitely has to be that conscious thought about reward and recognition for staff, doesn't there? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, um, for people who take part they get a book to kind of go alongside the project I really like that idea yeah. that, and then they're taken out of the normal observation pool and it doesn't have to be that but there has to be an acknowledgement of people's yeah. energies and efforts in some yeah. way we, sadly because of lockdown we didn't manage to do the celebration this time that we did first time so at the end of the project in year one um 
we actually use some of the funds and things that we've got. Every member of staff that participated, including the APs, we all got a little glass plaque that said we've been proud of the project yeah. um, and a certificate and we just had cakes and drinks, you know, and just had that celebration at the end. Yeah. Um, and they really liked that. And what Bolton did was they actually, um, they decided to get the staff members um, a good to great lanyard oh great so um they they had that um and said that they were ambassadors you know so we again we, we did slightly different things but got very similar results from it and you know because we've got to do what works for our institution um yeah. but that's that's worked really well and me and angela are still in contact we still you know what are you doing for this and how are you doing that and talking about teaching and learning conferences and things and we're just sharing all the time which has just been amazing and we would never have had that without this project. Yeah, I know. And that's, it's really interesting, isn't it? That, you know, one of the things that we do recognise is really powerful is, is the power of collaboration. But in education, teachers um, sometimes are so overloaded in terms of workload, we don't get enough chance to collaborate. And but I think what's, what is, you know, phenomenal is, when you've been through something quite challenging but but exciting as the, as the projects have been through AP Connect you do then make those links that just continue on and that's yes. really beneficial yeah definitely I mean using um, Slack has been great so you know there's, there's people um, that I'm talking to through there that I may well have met at one of the things, but I don't remember having conversations with, yeah. but we've stayed in contact and we've carried on and they've been a great support to me. I was explaining to you before that I've been on a six months of common inequality that I would never have even considered without AP Connect and the skills that I've learned, the project management that I've had to do. Um, and I'm now, when we go back in August, going to be an AP Point five, so I've got my dream job. So AP point five, lecturing part that point five. So it, it's perfect, yeah. and it's given me opportunities to meet with people. So I had a con we're, we're restructuring our instruction process. So I've met with somebody through here that we've got together and shared those ideas. You know, there's so many different things going on that it gives you the chance to look at and see. I want to know more about that, or I'll just observe what's happening with that. But at the minute, I've not got the time to join in, but you're still knowing what's going on at different colleges. You're not just, you know, I've only taught at Hot Hall. Yeah. So I know what we do, yeah. but now I'm learning what other people do, and it validates what you're doing sometimes, which is really nice. Yeah, it is. And I remember when I was a um, teacher learning coach, it's, it's, you do you kind of you try and work together internally but you de you're kind of almost desperate to to hear about what other people are doing and i think this project uh, the ap connect projects have given that real meaningful connections to people to be able to share ideas and um i've always known it i don't know why but i've always known that the more you share your ideas, it's probably because I like talking, but, you know, <laughs> and then listening to other people, mm. it's that, it, the more you share your ideas, the more you then can reflect and build and develop rather than everybody trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. And, um, you know, with my lecturing head on, so I lecture in early years, um, I'm, I'm an NNEB from the good old days, um, and I've got a new little community and that from there with Annie Pendry and you know so through that I'm getting support with my special subject specialism mm -hmm. and ideas and getting into groups for that as well as the AP role so finding out what's going on at other colleges I've got somewhere that I can say oh you know what are you doing for this and how are you doing that that we can share ideas which is just fantastic yeah it really is it's really the power of collaboration is is fantastic, and um, as you said, there's um there's been like the Slack group keeping everyone connected, and then the yeah. events. So mm -hmm. it'll be amazing to see it grow again into year three. So yeah. just before we finish, um, yeah. what would you say to anybody who's thinking about um AP Connect Year Three and getting involved? Don't hesitate. Give it a go. Um, 
you'll get lots of support, you know, things that you don't think you can do. You know, none of us thought we could teach online. None of us thought we could use, you know, we didn't want cameras on. We didn't want to do any of all these things. I would never have thought I'd be happy to do something that was recorded. Yes, there's so much support, that community, they push you, but in a really good supportive way. And if you're not sure, there's always somebody there to sort of explain to you how to do things. And it's just nice to feel celebrated and to go back to your institution and say, we've done this or I've found this out or, um, well, we're doing it this way, but this college is doing it this way. And it helps you to evaluate what you're doing yeah. and to move forward or to actually think, no, what we're doing is right. Yeah. yeah. People come in telling us we love what you've done. And that's, you know, Angela and I have had such fantastic feedback about the project and people wanting to know and taking that and twisting it to fit their own institution and running what we've done, which is just so lovely. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it allows you to widen the lens, doesn't it? Which is yeah, always really definitely. better, for sure. So, well, thank you so much for joining me today, Alison. And um, take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.